And welcome back. Joining us for our second conversation are representatives from the Mental Health Association. Of course, we have Ms. Kathy Esquivel, who is the secretary, Ms. Sandra Sandy Mariano, who is the administrator, and Ms. Amy Jex, who is a counselor and a board member of the BHA. Um, MHA. BM, BM, BMHA. Just <laughs> BMHA. Just MHA. MHA. All right. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting us. So let's start with you, Amy. Tell us a little bit about the Mental Health Association and when it's formed and the objectives of the association. Thank you for pointing at me first, but this is why I brought <laughs> them along. Oh, okay. <laughs> they have, I, I joined the Mental Health Association when I came back in 2013. Okay. Sandy has been with the Mental Health Association for longer than I am, but okay. Miss Kathy was there from the beginning. Right. Okay, so we should start with you then, Miss <laughs> Kathy. Um, the Mental Health Association grew out of a Mental Health Advisory Board, okay. which was formed way back in 1996. Um, I just want to put a plug here. I think one of the most important things that was done at that time is we lobbied and successfully got passed without any dissension in 1997 mm -hmm. a bill to decriminalize attempted suicide. Believe it or not, attempting suicide was a criminal offense. So the police had to arrest you. And so we lobbied, we got the support of every sector of society. Uh, the judiciary, the police, the political parties, the churches, there wasn't a dissenting voice. And so now when people are in that really awful situation, the police are able to direct them for medical care. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that was really an achievement that we're very proud of. But that became an NGO in 2000 and I suppose our, our thrust is really to educate and educate the public and people actually with mental health issues mm -hmm. and to reduce the stigma and discrimination mm -hmm. that often makes people unwilling or unable to seek the medical attention that they need. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask what are some of the challenges, but I think uh, one of the, the foremost issues with regards to the work that you guys do is stigma and discrimination, as yeah. you rightfully point, pointed out. Um, in terms of other situations that come about, aside from these two specific challenges, what does the Mental Health Association has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, for instance? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's all voluntary, mm -hmm. except for Sandy, who is our wonderful administrator, who does all the heavy lifting. Um, so we do things like this to educate. Mm -hmm. We have professionals like Amy. Uh, we have a psychiatric nurse practitioner on the board. Um, so we are there as an advocacy group. We already mm -hmm. have the Ministry of Health doing the medical yeah. work. So we just do the advocacy, which we think is, and of course we work with the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. on, so when they have a march, we join in the march yeah. or whatever. One of the main things that we do regarding the stigma is Miss Kathy as a secretary, she always ropes us in to formulate an opinion as to how the MHA will approach a mental health issue in the society. This happens maybe once a month, once every two, three months. Whenever there is an overarching issue that we see with the churches, with the schools, with violence in our community, as the MHA, we are the ones who have to go there and show that mental health is a part of those things as well. Can you talk to us a little bit about the um, need for more mental health uh, providers and you know persons who would be interested in performing services in this very very delicate area of uh, medi medicine that is one of the things that we have been doing mm -hmm. as miss kathy said as sandy is the main one who does it we 
provide education mm -hmm. we go on things like this yeah. but also we have events throughout the year Sandy can you talk exactly. about some of those events mm -hmm. um, we do have um, events that we conduct throughout the year mm -hmm. we have a wellness um, actually early in the year we usually have a wellness workshop mm -hmm. that we conduct um, for uh, the police officers, the okay. um, BDF, um, really and truly caregivers or mm -hmm. anyone that needs um, a wellness because we really need to take care of ourselves if we want to help yeah. others. We also have a annual conference that we have um, maybe about mid-year. In June, we usually have a conference. We haven't had one in a bit, but we, we usually have um, a conference with a little cost to it, of course, because we have to bring in a professional to assist with that mm -hmm. and we have our um, speech competition which we are very proud of mm -hmm. um, it's a speech competition that um, is mainly the, the secondary school students mm -hmm. we have um, sometimes about 10 schools participating um, in our speech competition where as a means to disseminate information to the general public. Mm -hmm. We actually try to get in the teens to, you know, become more sensitized in mm -hmm. mental health. And they um, do a speech of five to uh, eight minutes. And um, it's, of course, on a mental health topic. Mm -hmm. um, this year we were um, focused mainly on mental health first aid. Mm -hmm. and they get assigned a subtopic they present on on that topic and so that's um, what we do um, mainly throughout the year Not I wanted to um, her to mention that in particular because you had asked about how we get professionals and how we talk about the sensitive sensitive topics but the truth is mental health permeates our society it's not something that is taboo it should not be taboo we all experience happiness we all experience sadness we all experience anger we all experience every one of those emotions and all of these are tied into our mental health like Sandy says we have to take care of ourselves as individuals as groups as different sectors of the society we each have to take care of ourselves so as we do this as we raise sensitivity we make it more mainstream in the culture whereas it's not just something on the side it's something that we do every day we all either exercise we eat healthy or we have fun with what we do you know all of these little things are mental health going back to training professionals i think there has been an interest in mental health in pursuing like what nurse bennett in the previous segment was saying they were talking about the um nurse practitioners in psychiatry the psychiatrist um the mental um the Ministry of Health offers um, counseling as well as the hum as human development. Um, Ministry of Education does as well. So we have different areas where we do have these mental health services offered. It's just that, you know, there are very few of us. And I go in and other counselors go in and psychiatrists go into the schools and we talk at career days, we present at career fairs and we are there to show people yes we are growing and we need a lot more of you to come along with mm -hmm. us there is the availability but if there aren't professionals in the field there is no need for the ministries or the government agencies or anybody to open more positions in these because they won't be filled mm -hmm. so it's kind of like a catch-22 or like a loop so the more professionals we get in the more jobs there will be open because there is a need there is a need for social workers for counselors for psychiatrists <coughs> for psychologists mm -hmm. there is a whole range of careers within mental health and we need a lot more people in it so you are right and i can imagine that the advocacy the need for advocacy in different fa um, factions of our society is really important especially within the business community because I always I always talk with my friends about the fact that I need sometimes a mental health day from work <laughs> just to deal with work issues and work related things. We'll have to invite so, you to our work. next wellness day. <laughs> <laughs> So can you tell us a little bit about the advocacy within the, in the workplace for mental health issues? Yeah, we, we have in the past offered um, 
actually have offered to some of the big businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I know BEL and some of the other bigger businesses to go in and have a session with their staff. Yeah. Um, we don't charge, but of course, anyone that wants to um, sponsor it, it it's, um, it's welcome. And so we can arrange uh, any businesses that are interested what they have to do is provide us a space and their staff time and we can organize for a professional to go in and just have as you say a little hey this mm -hmm. will help you get yeah. through your day yeah um some companies actually uh, not so much in belize but a few of them do recognize the need to support their staff and they have, if they have a human resource department, again, it depends on the size of the business, mm -hmm. but they might have someone there trained to help people with the kinds of issues. Um, partly, I think they do it because it's a good thing to do, and partly because your employees are more productive yeah. <laughs> if you help them mm -hmm. with these issues. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, those are certainly ways that we can reach out to the business community. So anyone who's interested, phone Sandy at 202 2511 and we can arrange to have one or more short sessions with your staff. When you look at the school setting, for instance, I could recall in high school we were each provided a counselor uh, and I think one of the apprehensions, as far as my memory would serve, the counselor was oftentimes the teacher, right? And so you find that students were a bit careful in what they were willing to share because at the end of the day, that individual teaches a subject that <laughs> the student is, is in that mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. But I think when you look at primary school, and secondary school, for instance, you have children who, and students, young men and women, who go through certain aspects of either depression or any other form of mental health. My question is, has there been an attempt on behalf of the Mental Health Association to start looking at those age ranges, for instance? Well, as I say, we're an advocacy mm -hmm. group. We don't treat people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in terms so, of in yeah. terms of awareness so how, well that's why we have the school competition because mm -hmm. it's not just the eight or nine students mm -hmm. they all bring their classmates mm -hmm. to cheer them on and if you remember back to your days nobody mm -hmm. wants to sit and listen right. to a lecture but they'll listen to their speech of their classmate mm -hmm. because they're cheering on mm -hmm. so we do this because it is a way to get information to young people. Yeah. Um, actually, the quality of the speech competition, I mean, I'm blown away by these young people who stand up with no notes and give a five to eight minute speech. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, I'd love to arrange with Channel 5 for the for the winner for you to tape them and, and play their speech. <laughs> um, because the quality is, you know, they, they do their research mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they really have some important things to say. And I think young people listen to other young people mm -hmm. more than to older people. So that is, but it's limited. We can't do it every day. It's mm -hmm. a once a year mm -hmm. uh, event. Yeah. Uh, but certainly if we could arrange to publicize the best speeches, mm -hmm. yeah. that would be a way we'd love to partner with with you all to yeah. do that and I was gonna go ahead. Okay. I was gonna jump in to, to ask about your partners because of course you are an advocacy movement and I know that there might be very limited resources in terms of finances and the and the human resources that you need to put off a lot of events that more events throughout the year so talk to us a little bit about partners that you the association would want to join in on the on this movement well and we do get some um, sponsorship, mm -hmm. I'd say, from um, what that we regularly have for the speech competition. Mm -hmm. But of course, we would like more uh, sponsorship 
uh, for the the um, conference, which yes. is a huge um, a, a huge event that yeah. uh, reaches out more to the caregivers or the the um, the wider public, you, the, the general public, you would say. Um, we need. Um, I mean, it's not cheap at all to, mm -hmm. you know, to do these these conference at all. Um, we have to, as Ms. Cathy said, we have to find a venue that's a, a big um, donation that we would need to have that. Bringing in someone, uh, the professional, to facilitate this the, the event mm -hmm. on a whole, it's a lot of cost. It's mm -hmm. very costly. So um, we would love for the business community, of course, mm -hmm. um, seeing that this is very, very important. I know that they realize that it is important, but um, for them to step forward and, and come out and try to, to help us to, you know, let this, this um, a conference, or, uh, mm -hmm. the annual conference that we have mm -hmm. to become, you know, fruitful. And I think right now within the Mental Health Association as well, we are putting the word out to invite new members to join us. Okay. This is one of the most important parts that we want to do. So again, it's important to call Sandy. If you know someone or you want to be a part of this mental health association, we often try to invite um, different sectors of the government to be a part so that they have uh, representation when we make choices or we have opinions. Um, as you said, the business sector is important. One of the things that the MHA does is it sponsors the Welcome Center. And that is one of the day-to-day -day things. I don't know, we've mentioned the Welcome Center a few times on, on several of the morning shows. Um, Sandy and, and um, Miss Joyce go out and they talk about that a little bit more often. That is a little bit separate from the Mental Health Association. So would you like but to talk more? it is our baby. Mm -hmm. it's Again, part of advocacy, um, the Ministry of Health, I think, and internationally has recognized that its community mental health program is excellent. They, they actually reach out to people. And um, of course, the, the purpose is, as far as possible, you don't want to institutionalize people. You want to treat people where they're most comfortable, and where they are but there's another need so it's not just medical needs we find a lot of people with severe mental health problems including a, a substance abuse they lack social support so it's not just to get their meds they need a midday meal they need somewhere to go and have a bath yeah. they need somewhere to go and hang out so the Mental Health Association lobbied and begged and pleaded and cried and we got support from the Social Investment Fund and we built the Welcome Center which is a day center where people with mental health, homeless, substance abuse because they're all tied together. We have over 400 registered participants and on a daily basi basis, 50 to 60 people, they come in, they get a hot meal, they get a bath, they change their clothes, they watch TV, they play games, we have some income generation, um, they hang out with people. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to expand that work and just keeping the doors open is a daily challenge. Mm -hmm. We do have help from some of the ministries, but it's still a challenge. But we find even something like that. When we first opened it, we had a few people in the neighborhood. Hmm. We know aren't any kind of people around here. And there was a, some pushback. Forgive but me for interjecting. This is the Welcome Center at the corners of Tibruce and Vernon Street, right? Yes. Okay. But now the people in the neighborhood recognize that it actually uplifts the neighborhood because it's a nice building, it's kept nice. Mm -hmm. um, and so that again helps to reduce stigma and discrimination, mm -hmm. you know, um, because everybody, beyond all the labels you put on them, they're human beings. Do you know, and hearing this, it really baffles me that 
in our country, we don't, from a, a, a government level, from a policy making level, we don't recognize the needs for the need for things like this. Uh, Although the government actually does, in that mm -hmm. they they pay the administrator, they pay mm -hmm. one of the assistants. Yeah. Uh, human development gives us a grant, so there is a recognition okay. that this is part. And of course, we work together. Yeah. With and and if we see any of our participants that seem to be in need of help, mm -hmm. we contact. We don't offer medical services yeah. but we make sure we put that person in contact so yes that is there is a recognition okay. but you know when you have a pie and everybody mm. wants a slice That's of the pie yeah. we have a small slice mm -hmm. but we recognize we want a bigger slice but so does everyone else okay. so that's that's why we have to reach out beyond and it's usually through the welcome center that um, we get the support from businesses, or at right. least we try. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do have some businesses like the the Spanish Lookout community is mm -hmm. from the beginning. They have offered us continuous support yeah. in terms of what we buy from uh, or what we are donated through quality poultry, mm -hmm. and there are others. Um, so. Yeah, but it is important. It's not enough just to give people meds mm -hmm. yeah. if they don't have a meal. Mm -hmm. And so we try to provide that other side. Okay. Part of the work that you do, and it's a rather uh, critical aspect of the job that the Mental Health Association does, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. is the idea of advocacy and awareness. Since coming into existence in 2000, have you seen a vast uh, improvement, so to speak, in, ter in terms of public awareness as to what uh, is out there, what is being offered, the work that the association does, and of course the need for us to understand the, the issues surrounding mental health. Um, I think it's slow, but it is happening, and, and I'd like to say it's not just Belize. Mm -hmm. I mean, these issues are worldwide. Yeah. And Belize is actually further along than some other places. We've got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's really encouraging is that there are now people with mental health issues who feel comfortable enough to talk about them. And so that other, instead of us talking about someone, someone can talk about themselves mm -hmm. and I think that that's important because again we see the person behind the label mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I think that, that, that is one of the most powerful ways that the Mental Health Association tries to get through when we have our banquet when we have the speech contest we hear that people are representing themselves and that is more powerful than us going out and speaking and talking for them. We try to empower the individuals and then they pick up the baton and they go with it. Thank you, Amy, for mentioning the banquet. Yeah. I totally forgot the banquet. <laughs> That's the one I, oh I know the most about. Yes, <laughs> we, ha we, we do have a banquet every year also. Mm -hmm. um, we can't have it at Chateau <laughs> anymore. Yeah, <laughs> we <laughs> should have it at Chateau. Yeah. So now we're, we're hoping that, venue. yes, mm -hmm. right, that someone would uh, mm -hmm. step up to the plate and donate a venue for us <laughs> to have <laughs> that cough, event. Cough <laughs> 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 you know, yes. And also touching on... Uh, your previous question. Um, we do see, as Ms. Cathy said, a gradual um, people gradually getting, um, I guess, sensitized in mental health because really and truly we used to just say, oh, those crazy, crazy people. people. Mm -hmm. Now everyone, you hear everyone saying that mentally ill mm -hmm. person. So even that step mm -hmm. for us knowing now not to you know, um, label them as label, crazy. Right, exactly. That we actually have. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of people, I mean, there are thousands of people with mental it's illness. True. It's and very true. Not only the ones that we can readily see, mm -hmm. you know, out there. Yeah. I'm glad that you guys have been uh, able to join us this morning to discuss this very important issue 
uh, our time for this segment has uh, all but come to an end. So once again, I'd like to thank you guys for spending the time with us and our viewers at home and at work uh, to actually become more sensitized and be more aware of the work that the MHA does. So can I just one say sure. yeah. one last thing? As Amy said, we are looking for <coughs> new members. Yeah. And so anybody who would like to join us, and we have professionals, mm -hmm. we have people whose interest is because of a family member, yeah. um, just anyone who thinks that they might have something to offer, we'd love to get new people, new ideas. Mm -hmm. And so contact us at 202-2511 and we welcome you aboard. Do you have a Facebook page or website? Yes, we do. Mental Health Association. Yeah. yeah. Mental Health Association. Yeah. Has a and Facebook page. And yeah. you can contact Sandy at mentalhealthassociation at gmail.com. Gmail. Okay. Thank you so much for all that information. And I think this is a really good way to, to, to delve into issues that are very pertinent, very important in our country that need developing, that need more persons who are willing to, to join in on this very important movement. So thank you very much, ladies. Okay, thank so we you. are going to take a really quick break and when we come back it's to talk to a person living with depression and to hear his perspective. So stay tuned. <laughs> 